Hey Guardians, it's Quark here. Thank you for joining me today as we talk about the Garden Salvation Raid. What are raids? It's a six-man activity where we go on adventures, doing mechanics, killing bosses, and getting sweet, sweet loot. The year is 2023, and with the introduction of Lifehull, it's time for an updated raid guide. Ah. We don't want to be stuck using those 2019 raid guides. If you are still using those raid guides from 2019, you'll feel outdated. Just like not hitting the like and subscribe button. Now thank you all for hitting the like and subscribe button. And let's get on with this raid guide. With this raid guide, you'll feel like you've done this raid a hundred times, a thousand times. It's going to be so easy that you won't even know what you're going to do with the rest of your day. After 50 clears of this raid, I have come up with the most critical and essential information that is necessary for completing the raid with the least amount of issues. So come on in with me and let's get her done. Now before we get started, I need to thank my clan Stellar Force, without which this wouldn't be possible. Garden of Salvation, or GOS for short, is a Vex themed raid that was introduced in Shadowkeep. Suggested weapons are Xenophage, Arbalist, and Taipans or Rockets. The enemies attack with every damage type, but with most Vex themed content, Void and Solar Damage are the most prevalent. We start the raid on the moon. We need to open a portal to the Black Garden. The method of opening the portal is to kill the enemies in front of it. Once you go through the portal, you are in the Black Garden and at the first encounter. The first encounter is evading the Consecrated Mind. Some suggested weapons are Funnel Web for Void Shields and Thunderlord for Overloads. There are Overloads, Cyclopes, and Minotaurs. So, anything to deal with the Minotaurs and Heavies for the Champions and Cyclopes will make this a cinch. I like using Xenophage or a Sword. The Consecrated Mind is the large harpy sucking on the Minotaur, like a baby with a pacifier. You might recognize it from Spire of the Watcher, not that Bungie reuses content. Anywho, you'll need to split into two teams that will each have team swapping responsibilities between zones. There are five zones in total. The first team, aka Chain Team, will need to shoot the floating cube, make a line with their bodies that goes from the floating Vex cube to the Vex barrier. This will create a chain that once connected will open the next area. The team will need to kill the enemies in there and kill the Angelic, a special Hydra, and once again shoot a Vex cube, make a chain and open the next area. The Consecrated Mind will teleport in. The Chain Team will now stay here take over the second team's responsibility, and become the Harpy Team. The second team, aka Harpy Team, will have to stay with the Consecrated Mind. The Consecrated Mind will move around periodically and shoot out a debuff called Voltaic Overflow. If no one walks through it, it will wipe the team. The Harpy Team needs to stay alive and pick up Voltaic Overflows. Once they pick up the Voltaic Overflow, they are on chain building duty. Until the debuff goes to zero, and they can go back to picking up the debuff. If you pick up two Voltaic Overflows, you die, but the team doesn't wipe, so do it if you have to. Generally, when the Consecrated Mind teleports away, the rest of the Harpy team becomes the Chain team and moves to the next section. The teams will repeat this until the fourth zone. For this barrier, can either take the barrier down by making a chain three times, or just wait after the first chain. The barrier will come down no matter what, and if you need a breather, now is the time. The fifth zone doesn't have any chaining, any doors, anything crazy like that. It just has a bunch of cyclopes and overloads. And once again, you're going to be needing to pick up the Voltaic Overflow. So you'll be chasing down the debuff. In this section, you can have everyone chase after the boss and try to get the debuff, or you could have those that already have the debuff timer on them stay back and shoot at the Cyclopes and Minotaurs while the others chase down the boss and the debuff. Either way, keep heading to the end. If you try to get past the boss and go faster than the boss, you may be murdered by the boss when he teleports in, so please be careful. If you have made it to the end though, there will be a chest that appears and you will get some loot.
The next section is a jumping puzzle. Most teams have one person pull everyone else. There is a secret chest to the left after dropping into the hole and you need to use the elevator platform to reach it. Guardian down. Guardian down. Welcome to the second encounter, Summoning the Consecrated Mind. You'll want something to deal with barrier champions, you'll want something for ad control, and something for mini bosses and minotaurs. Great weapons for those barriers and for the mini bosses are Arbalest, Wish Ender, or Lament. I prefer Stasis on Warlock, Sunspots on Titan, and Combination Blow for Hunters. I like using the Anti Barrier Artifact mod with. Xenophage or Thunderlord, and a Chill Clip Autoloading Fusion. You will need two players minimum to use the boxes to make a chain with the Confluxes, which are pillars, to get the Enlightened buff. The Enlightened buff lets you kill specific enemies with white shields. Also making the chain the first time between zones opens portals to the closest zone that also had the Conflux activated. There are four confluxes and you can't allow enemies to sacrifice at them or they will wipe the team. The confluxes as you can see them, they will have a slight opening in the middle and one sacrifice will close it and the second will wipe the team. This will require a bit more team organization to accomplish. The end goal is to have four confluxes defended by one player each with floaters using the portals to continuously rebuff the defender and help kill Angelics. There are two main methods for accomplishing this. The first method is three teams of two, where one team stays at the spawn conflux and the other two teams go left and right. The spawn team kills their ad and the Angelic and tether with the conflux and the vex cube. One of the spawn team members will be defender and the other will be floater. The spawn floater will need to cover the spawn and left and right zones until the final zone is established. Left and right teams will do the same as spawn, 
but one member from each team will defend and the other member from each team will continue to the final zone. Once they clear the adds at the final zone and buff, one will defend and the other will float. The two floaters will divide the plates in half and only have two unless the other floater needs help. Now most teams use the callouts 1 through 4, clockwise starting at spawn to label each zone. Or they'll use baseball field callouts where spawn is home. Most zone 1 floaters float 1 and 2 and zone 3 floaters float 3 and 4. The second method is an older method that is not as reliable as the first but some teams find success with it and that is called the school bus method. This is where you leave a team of two on first complex and head clockwise leaving two to buff on second complex and the other two to go to third complex. Once they buff on second complex, one defense and the other catches up to the other two that went ahead. At third complex, two will buff and one will go ahead to the fourth complex. After buffing, one player stays on third in defense and the other heads to fourth to buff with the fourth person that went ahead. Afterward, the one person on fourth will defend and the other will be a floater. The first floater will be covering first through third until the fourth zone is completed. This method is best for helping multiple inexperienced people by having one strong player that can reach the fourth zone alone and kind of clear it out while they wait for the other buddy to come and buff with them. And one floater that's a strong floater that can defend one through three because this method takes longer. Once all the zones are activated, by having all the complexes activated, everyone should be in position. This means that every complex has a defender, and the floaters are moving from portal to portal, helping to rebuff the defenders. The defenders will be defending against these white shielded enemies that come in, and will be calling out when angelics spawn. Three angelics will spawn at a random complex. The defender will need to call it out, the floater will come to assist, Hopefully the defender can handle them on their own, but the floater is there just in case. While the angelic is alive, that zone's conflux and vex cube will not be activatable. The vex cube will have a barrier around it. Even with the vex cube being barriered and the angelic spawning in, adds will continue to spawn. So this is why you want to have the floater bouncing back and forth, always rebuffing, and why you want the floater to come in to assist. Because without the buff, sacks can happen quite easily. When every zone has been attacked by Angelics and defended successfully, a new Conflux will form in the middle. Everyone will need to head to the middle. At this time, kill the enemies on the way. Once you have reached the middle, you want to clear out any adds that were missed, kill the Angelic, and make another tether chain with the Conflux. You want to make sure that all six players are inside the chain so that everyone can get the Enlightened buff. 
once the center conflux has been activated, Angelics and Adds will spawn in. There will be Supplicants, which will be exploding Harpies that can blow you up if you're close by. After clearing out the Angelics and the Adds, then you will need to rechain again. At this time, you can chain two times in a row. It is not absolutely necessary, but there is enough time to do so and it refreshes the buffs timer and makes sure everyone is buffed before the final wave. During the final wave, you can kill all the Angelics and rebuff if necessary if there's still some adds left, or you should be able to kill all the enemies and then pick up your loot. Welcome to the third encounter, Defeat the Consecrated Mind. The boss is going to be the same as the Spire of the Watcher boss, so whatever damage you use there can be successfully used here. That means Linear Fusion Rifles, Galahorn with Rockets can be useful, uh, Thunderlord is not the best option, but you can try it, uh, Sleeper Simulant, Xenophage, Whisper of the Worm, these are all great alternative options if you don't have a great Linear Fusion Rifle, Rocket, or whatnot. For the rest of your loadout, some suggestions can be SMGs, Arbalists, Wither Horde, Trace Rifles. If you're running Divinity, you could be running a Sword. It will depend on what team and job you have in this encounter, and also the rest of your loadout. So please keep that in mind. A great super for this encounter is Bubble. 
and if you don't have bubble, well is a great second. You will want to split into two teams of three, an eyes team and a moats team. I hope you remember what moats are. Anyways, moats are coming from Gambit, but I digress. To start the encounter, you will need to tether with the conflicts. If you happen to die from the boss spawning in mid, you can self res You'll want the eyes team to follow the boss. He will move from area to area with a minor jumping puzzle in between, and he will release a voltaic overflow and someone will need to step into it and look at the boss. If two people step into it, both will get the voltaic overflow debuff, so please make sure one step in it at a time. The one that steps into it will need to look at the boss's eyes and see which ones are glowing red. The person that stands in the voltaic overflow will be stuck in place by detainment unless they die or complete the eye phase. There are six eyes, a inner set of three and an outer set of three. The only callouts are inner or outer. I aim in the middle top eyes and make my callout. All three glowing eyes need to be shot. If the wrong eye is shot, aka the white eye, not the red eye, the person detained will die. If you complete it correctly, the boss will move to mid, and the person that made the callout will have a debuff timer. If they stand in it again while having the debuff, they will die. You will continue following the boss, and the eyes team will rotate members making the callout. Moats team will bank the moats. A new complex will spawn at the beginning of the encounter. The complex needs 40 total moats, and it starts with a total of 10. If a Vex sacrifices at it, it will lose 10. Moats team will bank 5, then 10, then 10 again, and a final 5 moats. Moats will be provided by killing minotaurs, and banking them provides the enlightened buff, which lets them break the white shields off of enemies once again. The minotaurs will spawn randomly down one of the alleys. The first one always spawns in the same alley the complex is in. Once the first person has 5, they will head down to the complex and wait. They should wait until they see enemies with barriers before banking. This will give the second person more time to get their moats. Once the second person gets 10 moats and is at the complex, they should wait as well to bank if they can. The first moat banker should head to middle and try getting their last 5 moats as soon as the third banker gets theirs. The third banker should help the fourth banker kill the minotaur if there is time. The second banker should stay at the pillar after banking. If they want, they can kill supplicants that spawn in after an ally has banked. Once the complex is full, it will be glowing from the middle all the way to the top of the pillar. The moat team should already be in position at the complex. The eyes team should head to the complex if the boss isn't shooting the voltaic overflow. In the hallway from the middle to the complex, if someone is a bubble titan, they should put a bubble on the right wall so it does not cover the whole path. The boss will head to the complex. Everyone should be standing in front of the complex facing mid. The boss will face the complex, spread its body, and show all its eyes. The team needs to shoot all the red eyes or white. All the eyes are popped. The boss will backpedal to mid and will be damageable. This is where the bubble comes in. If placed correctly, the team can walk through it while following the boss during the damage phase. If you're unable to one phase the mechanics start over and you repeat it, the mechanics before the second damage phase seem a little bit quicker, so you'll need to be on top of everything.
Once you have successfully killed the boss, a chest will appear in the area that has spinning walls. I call that washing machine. Continue through the doors to reach the jumping puzzle. It's always swords help, and if this is your first time, this jumping puzzle is amazing. Also, I'll be showing you a solo route for jumping the puzzle without using the flowers. In the tree, there is a secret chest, and enjoy. Down. Guardian down. Guardian down. Down. 
Welcome to the final encounter, defeating the sanctified mind. Here, we need to defeat the sanctified mind, the large boss in the middle of the large arena. I would suggest a similar loadout to the previous encounter. So rockets, LFRs, or the current MVP Thunderlord. If you have the Relay Defender or Enhanced Relay Defender mod, this would be great for this encounter. Well, and Healing Rifts work wonders here. You'll want something for dealing with Cyclopes from a distance. You will only have to deal with Overload Champions if you mess up severely. You will need to split the fire team into three teams of two and deposit moats into two complexes. First Portal Team, Second Portal Team, and Builder Team. Portals are created by shooting either the leg and opening a portal to the left or shooting the shoulder and opening a portal to the right. When one of the weak spots is shot, a portal will be created, a cyclops will spawn, and a portion of the floor will be taken. If you are on the floor while it is taken, you will die. Inside the portals, it will be either goblins, which will grant a total of 15 motes, or harpies, which will grant a total of 18 motes. If you enter the portals more than three times, overloads will spawn in the portal areas. Once one complex is full, the Vex can't sacrifice at it. The complexes start at 10 and need 40 motes in total. A sacrifice subtracts 10 motes. The complex on the left is white and needs white motes, aka light motes. The right complex is orange and needs orange motes, aka dark motes. The simple description is first team gets all the motes in the left portal and banks at the left complex and the second team does the same and then they switch the portals and complexes while the builders defend and build. And now for the more detailed rundown. I will go over each team's duties up to opening the damage phase. Once the encounter starts, the boss will walk around shooting at the team and two complexes will form a left light complex and a right dark complex. The team needs to kill the pads and the angelic. Once the angelic is slain, the team will shoot the leg opening the left portal. First team will enter, and if goblins, they will kill all the adds and collect all the motes and say, shoot the leg. If they didn't get all the motes, they will need to call it out. If there are harpies, they will need to call out how many motes they got to the second portal team and say, shoot the leg. They will be teleported to the spawn and head left toward the left light complex to bank their motes. Watch out for the floor being taken by the boss and watch out for the psychops. The first team will can delay their banking. If they have time on their moats, once they do bank, please make sure to have one member bank at a time and stagger it so that there is a more extended amount of time to have the enlightened buff. Once they bank the moats, they will get the enlightened buff and shielded enemies will spawn. First portal team will need to prioritize breaking the shields while the second portal team is collecting their moats. Once the second portal team has collected their moats and banked, they will take over the first team's position of damaging shields and clearing ads. The first portal team will shoot the shoulder and head into the right portal. First portal team will repeat the same process as they did in the left portal, but when teleported back, they will bank in the right conflux, watching for the floor and Cyclops, and if left complex is full, they will both defend their right side and pretty much forget about the left complex. Alright, second portal team. Once the first portal team is done and they tell you to shoot the leg, you shoot it and enter the portal. This is where it gets tricky. If the first team collected less than 15 motes and you don't see harpies, you'll need to say we need another runner to the left builder. The second team will follow the same process as the first, except they need to call out how many they need based on the first team's deposit, and if they can't meet it, the builder needs to make it up for it. If they need more than 10 moats, then the second team needs to tell both builders they will need to take the left portal. Once the second team is teleported back, they will bank like the first team. If the left complex is full, they will move to the right to defend the right after the banking left complex. If the left complex is not full, one will have to stay left and one will have to go right to defend the complexes. And if both defenders have left to go into the left portal, you will need to kill the left cyclops. Once the second team has the enlightened buff, 
they will tell the first team to head to the right portal and shoot the shoulder. When second team enters the right portal, they will do the same steps as the first left portal. When they have exited the portal, they need to make sure if they have filled up the right conflux to break all the shields before they lose the buff. If any adds are missed that have shields, then they will have a chance at sacrificing at the confluxes when the damage phase is over. Alright, the builder team are like the backup portal team. They only go through portals if the second portal team asks them to. They will need to pay attention to the cyclopedes and the adds spawn time. They will attempt to rebuild what the boss takes and try to do so between ad waves and bankings. They will use the vex cubes above the confluxes and connect them to the black stars in the vex milk. It is best to leave the platforms that are very far away after a damage phase because you will need three to make the chain. Also, when the left conflux is full, the two builders can move there because the portal team should be in control of the right conflux. What you are trying to avoid is for someone to have the enlightened buff but be stuck in a chain and not able to break shields because you decided to build at the wrong time. Once the second team enters the right portal, there should be no building on the right side. For less experienced teams, the builders can ignore building until after a damage phase and just be ad clearers and back up portal team. Okay, once both complexes are full, an angelic will spawn that you need to kill. Note, killing the angelic at the boss's feet will blow up and proc his weak spot, spawning a cyclops. The boss will have his hand out with either a white or orange light cross, signaling the light or dark conflux. Three teammates need to make a chain from the matching conflux to the boss's hand to start the damage phase. The person running Well of Radiance should not participate in the chaining. You should have anyone not chaining go to the other conflux. For an extended damage phase, you can chain the other conflux. I like to have my team of three do both confluxes to get the extended damage phase. While doing that, I have three people, the other three members, stand in the middle and start damaging the boss. They should be able to avoid being chained at that point. If you are struggling the second chain attempt, the next best thing is to just not do it. Have everyone use the Relay Defender or Enhanced Relay Defender mod on all their armor and do damage from the opposite conflux. Honestly, the double chaining is finicky and requires some experience and with Relay Defender mods, you will make up for a lot of the lost damage. If you're unable to one phase, there are a few steps before rinsing and repeating. Once the damage phase is over, the complexes will move and now is the time to build. An angelic will spawn shortly after it and building will stop. You will repeat the previous steps until the boss is vanquished. Congratulations on completing the raid and thank you for supporting my channel. A like and subscribe to me is bigger than getting a raid exotic. You can find me on all social media and also within your hearts. I stream live on Twitch and thanks again. Peace.
down. Guardians down. 